Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, even wherever you are in the world, as I always say. It's good to be with you, particularly the two faces that I see in front of me now, Mohammed Shukri in Bahrain and Phoebe Francis in Dubai. Gentlemen, how are you? Hi, Graham from Bahrain. Good to see you both, Phoebe and Graham. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Muhammad. Greetings to all. Absolutely. And I've been reminded that I've got should be doing a little bit more of a detailed, a little bit more detailed introduction for people who may not have seen us before. I am Graham Moore, and I am certified master of the Leadership Challenge, the first one in the Middle East uh, to be a certified master. And uh, the Leadership Challenge, as we know, a lot of us, is the most widely recognized leadership development program globally. And my two colleagues are also experts on this. They are trained facilitators. And that's why I, they're also good at a whole range of other things. And that's why I seek their advice, their counsel, and their thoughts as we have these conversations weekly. So I'm going to suggest this today. If you're up for it, what about I ask a question? What, what would you like to talk about this week? So that's a question, isn't it? But really what I'm suggesting is we talk about leaders and the power of questions. What do you think about that, gentlemen? Uh, the question, this question is already powerful. <laughs> <laughs> and it's made me on the alert. I am alert now. Uh, good. And, and considering answers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Phoebe, what is your response to this? Yeah, it, it is a fascinating, you know, all change start with the question. Ah, wow. What, yeah. What what can we do? Yeah. But but here's the other thing. So often and previously and and before we got to understand the important behaviors of leadership, we thought that we had to direct I am a manager, I need to tell you what to do. Don't ask questions, just listen to my words and listen to my direction and act. Jump high, right? So we reverse that and say that leaders ask questions. So what sort of questions would leaders ask? Um, first of all, uh, when you talked about questions, the first thing that came to me as a frequent speaker, the power of questions when we face an audience, just to start with a simple example before we go to the leaders, all right? When you state, when you inform, when you give a series of information, people, the function of the mind is only just to listen, receive, all right? So not all the functions of the mind work. But when you switch to a question mode, the audience takes a not totally different phase. His other sleeping uh, abilities, mind abilities, um, I'm not talking neuro neuroscience or biology, but there are there is evidence, but I cannot cite it now. They, the, the audience, the person wants to do something different. Now he is not receiving, he wants to send. So he's searching for answers, so he's thinking. So all thinking analysis is coming, all sorts of things. So he is engaged with you even before he starts answering, all right? So just by asking a question to your team, you are doing a whole lot shift in the dynamics and the activity of their brains. You are preparing them for the next. Absolutely, baby. Yeah, I, I was reminded of uh, my workspace few years back in which uh, in which my um, departmental leader asked me this question Phoebe what will you do in this situation what are your thoughts what are the perspectives you see which which uh, we should be considering and that led to a conversation which actually led to many diverse thought processes and we were able to pick it and choose something which which was unique in that uh, conversation. So uh, it, it was actually enabling me in the process where I am 
bringing my voice, my thoughts, my perspectives and helping in the progress to take that next step in the process. So uh, th that is what I am uh, recollecting and reflecting now. And that was very powerful for me because I felt included in the process. I felt I have ownership in that. I felt I have accountability because it was only the question which was generated from the person to whom I am reporting to. So the power of questions have huge impact on what we do in our uh, workplace or in our practice. Now, in the old days, in the days when we had managers, and of course we still have managers, <laughs> don't we, who tell people what to do. And they don't like people to ask questions about how it should be done. They say, do what I tell you to do. This is what you need to do. This is managing and it's not managing well at all. But when we ask questions, as you said, Phoebe, and as you have also said, Muhammad, it activates another part of the mind to think about what we what we can do. Now, I want to go through a couple of questions that are related to the five practices, just to remind people of the five practices and link those in into questions that leaders can ask. And the first practice we know is Model the way. And one of the key elements of modeling the way is living your values. So here's a question that I, as a leader, could ask one of the team members. So how do you feel when you see one of your our colleagues really living the values that are important to us? Oh, I, I just feel so connected to what he's doing and I just feel so proud and whatever, right? I feel that we are on the right course. I feel that we're all working together. Okay. Another part of Inspire, Inspire Shared Vision, of course, is, no, sorry, it's, whoops, jumping ahead, it, it modelled the way is doing what you say you will do. D-W-Y-S-Y-W-D. Now, I could say to someone, what does it mean to you when I always do what I say I will do? Oh, it just builds trust with me. It just builds confidence. Okay. So what do you think you need to do to make sure that you do that as well? Now, we could say that this approach is somewhat a cover coaching process as well. I understand that. What about model away, which I jumped to a moment ago? You can ask people that you're leading when you've defined together a, a, an inspired vision. You could say, what is it about the vision that we have that really inspires you? Oh, well, I just think that what we're able to achieve will, will actually make a huge difference to the world or to our client. What? Okay, that's fantastic. So I'm now going to... Yeah. Yes, Libby. Yeah, so uh, this this creates some some prompts within me, oh. like like in in the model the way when we are asking questions, we are actually showing them, as you said, we value your thoughts, we value your opinion. Yeah, and 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 that that is the great role modeling process. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, where, where, where we, we also bring that value of care. Ah, and support. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Really, really. Very good connection, Phoebe. Absolutely. So the vision, inspire a shared vision. How are you going to feel when we achieve this? This is about having people connect to the future, of course, and they might connect to it in, in their, own, their own way. Then we get to one which... Phoebe may have touched on earlier. And this is challenge the process. So give me a couple of questions. I've got a couple of favourites that are related to challenge the process. Give me a couple of questions that you could ask others as a leader. Well, my favourite is, um, can we do this? Is this doable? Uh, and another one is, can we do this even better? Even when we reach to a solution, I say, can we do this better? Yeah. So, yeah. If we were to do it again tomorrow, how could we do it differently? Yes. Yeah. 
Phoebe. Yeah, th th this again uh, led me because I I'm also a design thinking practitioner. You know, yeah. the, in, in all the design thinking, we start with the question, how might we? You know, how H we, we call it HMW questions. How might we? So when, when we are bringing that, how might we? We are actually including others also, bringing it, making it more participatory in the process. And that is. Again, another powerful way a leader can include, you know, we, we all discuss about inclusive environment. So that is where the leadership model the way to inspire people to be included in the process where innovation, change, everything flourishes. And again, uh, Graham, uh, the question which you always ask us, what if? Yeah, two of my favorite words. What if? What if we didn't do this? What if we did this? What if this happened? What if we had no money to achieve this result? What if? It, what if? Getting people to think about how we might do something, yes. Any more suggestions about the questions we can ask in Challenge the Process? Well, Challenge the Process is all about questions, actually. Yeah, right. So depending on the situation and the, and the challenge ahead, yeah, you can ask all sorts of questions. Yeah. So now we come to enable others to act. And one of my favourites, which I will share with you, as I think I've shared with you before, what do you need from me for you to make this happen? So if I presented to one of my team members a, a challenge for them to achieve something, this is what we need to do. This is how well, I, I, I suggest it should be done. But I'd like your thoughts on a better way of doing it. So you give it some thought and let me know. And then for the leader, once he's defined what the, out, the outcome should be, and once they've talked about the possible resistance points and challenges, the leader then says, what do you need from me for, to, to make, for you to make this happen? Oh, well... Maybe if you could talk to the finance department and clear up some of the issues. Okay, I'll do that for you. Maybe if you could talk to this, can we break down some rules? Sure. I'll clear any obstacles that I can if, in the way. You tell me what the obstacles are, and I'll do what I can to clear those obstacles. Okay. The key to that is what do you need from me for you to make that happen. <clears throat> Not for me to make it happen, but what do, I, what do you need from me you to make that happen yes, There's another yes. question in this area in this in this area as well and that is what's holding you back in achieving this it's certainly not me <laughs> right so it's a question followed by a statement what's holding you back it's certainly not me and usually what do you think the answer usually is to that question when that when that person really thinks about it, it's usually within themselves that their own belief system is holding them back. I don't think I can do it. They might be feeling imposter syndrome. They might be feeling that they aren't up to it. So it's a question, it's a coaching question in many ways. But I'm going to say, what do you need from? I've already said, what do you need from me? But then I would say, maybe depending on how it's going. What is holding you back. It's certainly not me. But you can also ask, what other things do you need from me to make this happen? Vibi, I know you've got a question that you're going to share with us. Go for it. Yeah, so uh, you, you, I, I was just thinking about an uh, interesting uh, book I came across. It is called uh, Coaching Habits by um, Michael Bungay Stanier. And uh, in that, he started with, you know, what do you want? And the and it is followed up with another question called and what else? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So, so so the simple question: What do you want? Help people to think: What is what? What do I want really in this place? In this situation? And and, and what else? Which is which is called O question? A W E because and what else? So it is called O question. You know and what else? So it actually triggers the thought process to see what else I should consider because quite often in many situations, uh, simple challenges may be 
uh, we may be seeing it as a symbol, but they have complex uh, interlinkages. Mm -hmm. And this AWE, that is all questions and what else, lead to explore what else I should be considering at this point. Yeah, and related, yeah. I do think what I'm about to say is related to what you just explained because it's about getting each individual to perform at their best. So I might, as a leader, say, tell me about where you want to go in your career. Oh, well, I, I want to be doing this and I want to be, okay. So what do you think we need to do to help you get there? Oh, Another one of these questions, which I often talk about in workshops, is to ask the question of each individual. By the way, this, this question also goes to the point that I make often, that you can't motivate a team. You motivate individuals who are part of that team. So I will say to each individual, what is it that brings you to work? What do you get out of doing the work that you do? What is the key driver is what I want to know for you. Oh, it's, it's, it's my... Um, it's my, working with the team, okay? Or uh, it's the um, it's the challenges that I have, okay? What else? Oh, that uh, I, I'm always able to find new ways of doing things, okay? What else? Mind you, I might only get one or two answers, but I'll get a range of answers if I ask different people. It might be, well, I want to earn some more money. Now, each of these answers, of course, enables me as their leader to help them achieve that. Someone wants more wants to earn more money. I'll show him how to do it. I'll help him develop his career. He has to do he or she has to do the work, but I will give him the guidance to do this. But if I haven't asked these questions, how am I going to help motivate each individual person? So that then leads me to the fifth practice: encourage the heart. So what questions could a leader ask when it comes to the fifth practice, encourage the heart. Uh, let, let me start here um, with a story. Of course. <laughs> uh, when I was assigned, promoted and assigned to a new uh, project in the health and safety department, so there was a mass expansion and revamping. So the manager uh, just bumped into my uh, room and he asked me a question. No one was there was after working hours. Mohammed, what is it you want? You know, I forgot the phrase of the question. Did he say, what, what is your personal objective? What is it, your dream? I don't know, but I was surprised. He did not tell me to do what, but he asked me a question. And what I understood at that moment is what it was not about, specifically about work or career. It was, I understood it was about me. So, I was baffled. This manager is thinking of my dreams. Anyway, I wrote my dream there and then, and it happened in two years, it happened. And so my, my, my I think we should also ask people about their personal aspirations, what they aspire for, and get interested in those through a set of questions, because that really uh, uh, encourages the heart a lot and brings them back totally to work with you, even if that dream or that ambition is not really totally in line with work. But regardless, do ask that question. What is it you want for yourself, for your life, for your family, etc.? Mohammed, I think what you've just touched on is critical to the whole process, the whole conversation that we're having about questions. And that is that the question, whatever that question is, that you just like the question you just said that your leader asked, brings the team member closer to the leader. They, mm -hmm. they in instinctively think, hang on, he cares about me or she cares about me because of the questions that he or she yeah. is asking. Yeah. Even if it is so, Muhammad, you, how is your daughter because I heard she wasn't well? Or how is your son? He's good to be doing some, his exams. That you, has he passed? It's those sorts of questions that get to the other aspect of that person's life, the individual, personal aspect, that connects us all. Correct? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Phoebe, encourage the heart. What sort of question could we ask? Yeah, it, it, based on what, what the moment shared, you know, uh, um, 
a, a simple question, which is, how can I help? Which, if a leader asks when someone is coming with a challenge, how impactful it will be? Sure. How can I help? Sure. And this, 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 this actually um, help to clarify what is in the mind of that person who is coming in. And how can I help? Will actually help him to see these are the solutions which I am looking for. Yes, you know when when someone is coming with a challenge in a workplace, how can I help? Will give you one, two, three, four. If we do that, it leads to outcome one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And what happens in most workplaces? No one asks how can I help. And some in many situations, I have seen. People saying, don't come with uh, problems. Mm, sure. And, and this actually shuts the people who are coming with challenging situations because these are the opportunities where progress and change can happen. Cost can be reduced. Improvements can be done. Engagement the of can customers be can be better. Engagement can be increased. People are more productive. They love what they're doing. All of those good things. Yeah. Yeah, and we know that with with encourage the heart, how people respond really, really, very, really, very well to being told thank you. I'll give you an example which is very clear in my mind at the moment because I heard this from a gentleman this morning. He's he said the last two nights, I have had three and a half hours away from working each night. In a twenty-four hour period two consecutive days, three and a half hours sleep each day. Well, I don't know about sleep and what, how much sleep he's getting in that particular time. And he said one of the other directors was was uh, asked him to, to do this work and he said, I have received nothing from him. What would he like? He said, a simple thank you would make all the difference. But what he did was to deliver the on the on the work that was required, and in, on each night got three and a half hours break from work, and that includes sleep, eat, whatever. All he wanted was a thank you, and he didn't get it. It's a simple act. We don't want to be working people all those hours anyway, but when we do, we've got to say thank you, even when they're doing what is their job. They just got to say thank you. And sometimes people will say, well, I'm just doing my job. And you say, yeah, I know, but I can thank you for what you're doing, can't I? Because I think what you're doing is really good. Right? It's not just the money that you receive each week. So one question that could be asked in this process is, how do you like to receive thanks for what you've done? And they might just say, just, wow, I've never been asked that question before. Simple thank you is pretty good. Okay. Any more suggestions about? Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, I have a bonus. Uh, on a daily basis, you can also ask simple questions. They might sound routine, but if you are insistent and consistent, they will untangle uh, knots of relationship. For example, Marcus Beckingham in his book, The uh, One thing you need to know about leadership, something like this. He says, every day, visit every desk in your team and stand there for a minute and ask him, ask the person two questions. Question number one, what's on your plate today? What are you doing today? Okay. Yeah. Question number two, how can I help you? How can I support you? That's it. Then move to the next, then move to the next. They might not answer at the beginning. They, they might say, no, thank you. But at, after some time, they will feel that there is a, a safe space to utter what is worrying them or where the help needs because they will also send sincerity, not routine, sincerity. So go ahead. If you don't have anything to break the ice between you and your team, you don't have to ask huge questions every day. What is your dream? What is your objective? You can start with this. What's on your plate? How can I help you? This is really good. 
And I'm going to extend that just a little bit. Muhammad's really good at setting things up so that we think he gets me thinking. This is one of those great things about this relationship. You know, I, in many of our conversations, I talk about what a leader can do in, in terms of the team meetings. And last time we, we had a call, we talked about motivating people in, in meetings. So here's another little suggestion I'm going to make. Quite often we have a flip chart in a meeting room or a whiteboard. So I'm going to say this, as a leader, why wouldn't you say to your team members in a meeting, okay, I want you on the I want someone on the flip chart to write down the what you get, what you contribute. I want everybody to offer a question that a leader could ask you to help you do your work. And we're nice going, to write, we're going to write those questions on the flip chart or on the whiteboard. These questions, of course, are coming from the team, but these are the questions that they like to be asked, perhaps. They, it's like they I might struggle initially, but I'm really wanting to have the discussion about questions. We could write a book on the questions that should be asked by leaders. Well, maybe a chapter on the book anyway. <laughs> Gentlemen, as always... I am most grateful for this discussion and I hope that people are learning from our sharing of the knowledge and the experience and the ideas that we have. If you've got any questions, anybody who's listening to us now, whether it's on the YouTube channel or on our, now on our podcast, send me an email, graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, at, at, the, at leadershipchallengemiddleeast.com. I'll say that again, graham, at Leadership Challenge Middle East dot com. We are here to respond to those questions. Gentlemen, once again, thank you so much. And I hope that you, you have a good week. And I want to have more questions for you, from you next week. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Phoebe.